Learning Outcome 1-3, Determine Memory, Causality, Stability, Linearity, and Time Invariance, given an input-output definition of a system. This video is for the system property, Stability. When we're considering an input-output definition of a system, stability is defined as a system is stable if all bounded input signals result in bounded output signals for all time t. Before you can use that definition, you need to know what the term bounded means. A bounded signal has magnitudes, that means the absolute value of x of t, that are less than or equal to m for all time t. m may be very large, but it must be finite. It can be a hundred, it can be a thousand, it can be ten thousand, hundred thousands. Very large, but it must be finite. So let's take an example. Here's a signal x of t, and the biggest value it takes on is m, and the smallest value it takes on is m. So its positive value is m, and its negative value is negative m. Therefore, the absolute value of x of t is less than or equal to m for all time t. Here's another signal that is also bounded by m. Notice the top goes up to m, and the bottom does not go all the way to negative m. It still means that the absolute value of x of t is less than or equal to m. It's just strictly less than on the negative side. Likewise, on the positive side, it does not need to reach m if it does on the negative side to be bounded by m. A constant that has the value of m is also bounded by m, and a constant that has the value of negative m is bounded by m. Let's consider this possible input signal x of t, e to the positive 3t. Please pause the video and sketch what this curve looks like. You should know this from your prerequisite courses. I hope that you came up with a plot that looks sort of like this, maybe a little bit smoother. This particular signal is not bounded because it goes up to infinity as t goes to infinity. And if this were the input signal being input into a system, it does not matter whether the corresponding y of t is bounded or not. You should not consider this sort of signal when determining whether a system is stable. Remember the definition. A system is stable if all bounded input signals result in bounded output signals for time t. The antecedent, the if part, fails, and therefore it's not something that you consider. Think back to your truth tables from like digital systems. Okay, so we're going to go back to bounded signals that might look something like this. Now let's look at an example and see if we can apply this definition and if you can determine whether the system is stable or not. Here we have y of t is 2x of t. This would be like an amplifier. Is the system stable? While you're determining this, I want you to think about four questions. If the absolute value x of t is less than or equal to m, so x of t is bounded by m, what is the biggest value x of t can take on? The answer to that is m. If the absolute value x of t is less than or equal to m, or x of t is bounded by m, what is the smallest value x of t can take on? The answer is negative m. If x of t is bounded by m, what is the biggest value y of t can take on? Now here you need to start applying the system definition and looking at if x of t is going to be no, be no bigger than m, what's the biggest value that y of t can take on? And finally, if x of t is bounded by m, what is the smallest value that y of t can take on given the system definition? You always want to answer these four questions for credit. The first two will always have the same answer of positive m and negative m, so you do not need to write them down when you're turning in your paper, but you should be thinking them in order to help determine the answer to this question. The second two questions, you do need to write down your answer to get credit for these problems. 
and discuss why you came up with those answers. So back to our system. Is this stable? If x of t is bounded by m, then 2x of t will be less than 2m, and 2x of t will be bigger than negative 2m, because x of t is never bigger than m, and x of t is never smaller than negative m. Therefore, we know that y of t, which is 2x of t, will be between negative 2m and positive 2m. Or, the absolute value y of t will be less than or equal to 2m. Therefore, y of t is bounded by 2m. So long as m does not go to infinity, y of t will also not go to negative infinity. It will go to a bigger value than x of t, but still a finite value. Therefore, the system is stable. Remember, for credit, you need to write this out, and therefore, this is the case. Another example. Here is a system which is also an amplifier, but it's using x of t at a different input time. Is the system stable? Remember, you want to answer the following four questions. If x of t is bounded by m, what's the biggest value x of t can take on? The answer is always m. If x of t is bounded by m, what's the smallest value x of t can take on? The answer is always negative m. If x of t is bounded by m, what's the biggest value y of t can take on? Now we need to start thinking about our system. And if x of t is bounded by m, what's the smallest value y of t can take on? Again, here you go back to your system definition to answer those last two questions. So is it stable? Mathematically, if x of t is less than or equal to m, 2x of t plus 1 will be less than or equal to 2m because this plus 1 only affects the signal being shifted left or right. It does not affect the amplitude. x of t will be scaled by 2, so 2x of t plus 1 will be smaller than or equal to 2m. Therefore, y of t will always be bigger than or equal to negative 2m, smaller than or equal to 2m, or y of t will be bounded by 2m. And like in the previous example, y of t therefore is bounded by a finite value if m is finite. You need to show this work here to get full credit on these problems. This system is stable. A third example y of t is t x of t. Is this system stable? Think of those four questions again. First two you know the answers to, but you need to think about that. The last two questions are the ones that you really need to come up with an answer for. Pause the video and write down your answers to these questions. Is this system stable? This system is not stable. Why? Even if x of t is bounded by m, the t times m is going to grow to infinity as t goes to infinity. As this goes to infinity, even if this is bounded by m, this whole quantity goes to infinity. And thus, y of t will go to infinity, or to negative infinity. Therefore, y is not bounded, and our system is not stable. A fourth example. This one's a little bit tricky. You got to know your math. Is the system stable? Four questions. Think about it. Write down your answers. We're going to go back to that bounded signal. Instead of looking up here at the m and negative m values, look at the value when the amplitude is zero. If our amplitude is zero, what's happening here? That's going to affect these values. y of t will go to plus infinity as we approach zero from the positive, and go to negative infinity if we approach zero from the negative. So even though it's a bounded input, we're dividing by zero 
and the system is not stable. 